Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. In today's Rank and Mall video we're going to take on American heavy metal band Manowar's full discography. Manowar is a legendary American heavy or power metal band from New York. Vocalist Eric Adams and bassist Joey DeMaio has kept the band alive through various lineups ever since they put out Battle Hymns back in 1982. So if you're a fan of Manowar then don't forget to strike that like button and subscribe so you won't miss out on future metal videos here on the channel. And if you're a wimp or a poser, then I must urge you to leave the channel, because now it's time to rank Manowar's full discography. Enjoy. The worst Manowar album is in my opinion their latest studio record, The Lord of Steel. Their latest if you don't count the re-recorded version of Kings of Metal that came out in 2014. But we don't count re-recorded albums here, so Dead Last is The Lord of Steel that came out in 2012. Music-wise, this is Manowar alright, but I think that this is the worst produced Manowar album, and when it comes to the craftsmanship of the songs, this is rather generic heavy metal. Donny Hamsik's drumming is generic and stale, Joey's bass is super fussy, and I think that this album lacks the killer songs that can redeem the album, like most other records of theirs. So I'm sorry to say this, but The Lord of Steel is just a dull and generic album in my opinion. It's bad, but on the other hand it's not a complete train wreck of an album. The title track The Lord of Steel has this Judas Priest vibe to it. So it's my favorite track from the record, but one good song won't save the album. So that's why I hold The Lord of Steel as my least favorite Man of War album. Next. And in 10th place we have Gods of War from 2007. And this was the last Man of War album to feature drummer Scott Columbus that passed away a few years after this album came out. This was also the last real Man of War album to feature guitarist Carl Logan, who awaits a long prison sentence. Gods of War is a rather epic album with more sing-along moments in comparison to The Lord of Steel. It's also better produced and Eric Adams' vocals sounds better this time. But there's a lot of symphonic elements here. Intros and outros that takes away from what we're all here for. The epic and powerful sound that Manowar usually brings to the table. And we get that in short bursts between all of those symphonies. King of Kings and Loki God of Fire are amongst the more memorable tracks here. And speaking of Loki, there is definitely a Norse mythology theme on Gods of War, with Loki, Sleipner and Odin getting songs named after them. And there is also 4 faceless warriors on the cover and 5 naked ladies, so I'm wondering who gets the 5th chick. Next. After a 6 year long wait, Man of War was finally back with a new album, Words of the World, that came out in 2002. But the fans hadn't forgotten about Man War since the title track Warriors of the World United became a gigantic hit with its anthemic qualities. It received millions of views on YouTube for example. And Warriors of the World is my favorite Man War album from this side of the millennium. Mainly because it reminds me the most of the band's glory days. But there were of course some duds on this record too, like the Aria, Ness and Dorma or the Mickey Newberry cover on the American Trilogy. I mean, if I want opera or gospel, I can grab a Pavarotti CD instead. So for me it's kinda strange that the Kings of Metal so often drew inspiration from outside the metal realm. And just like on Gods of War, there is an unnecessary amount of mood and symphonic passages on this record, and just not enough of the anthemic and epic metal that Man of War became famous for back in the day. But if you're curious about what modern day Man of War has to offer, then I'll suggest that you check out Call to Arms, Hand of Doom or the monster hit Warriors of the World United, since they are a good representation of what Man of War can do when they draw inspiration from their own past instead of classical music. Next. In 8th place we have Triumph of Steel from 1992, and this album is a bit of an odd entity since it's the only Man of War album to feature guitarist David Shankle and drummer Rhino. And the album kicks off with the 28 minute epic song Achilles Agony and Ecstasy in 8 parts, which is a mishmash of different ideas, from some sort of jazzy drum solo to a long and boring bass noodle. 
So when you're finally through the first half hour of pure boredom, the album is actually pretty decent. The song Metal Warriors with its rather hilarious and over the top lyrics is a cool metal anthem if I've ever heard one. It's just perfect for those drunk sing-alongs with your friends. Maybe not a masterpiece, but it's something of a guilty pleasure for me personally. And Spirit Horse of the Cherokee on the other hand is a great and powerful track. But Triumph of Steel is a bit unfocused and a bit too varied for my personal taste. I think it's an alright album, but the best is yet to come, so next. In 7th place we have Louder Than Hell from 1996. And the band had recently signed a deal with mayor label Geffen, but this would be their only album on that label. Maybe because of the declining interest for heavy metal music from the general populace. So in 1996 real heavy metal was more or less a thing of the past. But Louder Than Hell is a solid metal album and it's more old school sounding than most records that came out that year. Also worth noting is that Scott Columbus was back in the lineup after being missing in action on Triumph of Steel. And this is also the first Man of War album to feature scumbag guitarist Carl Logan. And the album itself is a pretty solid affair and it wouldn't be completely false to claim that this was the last breath of the classic Man of War since the band has only put out three original full-length albums in the last 20 years and the quality of those outputs were a bit all over the place in my opinion. Louder Than Hell is a powerful record with lots of metal anthems like Brothers of Metal, The Gods Made Heavy Metal and Number One. But there are some throwaway moments on this record too. The regular guitar noodling parts, the symphonic instrumentation, and some softer ballad moments, but overall, this was about as good of a metal record that you could find in the mid 90s, so next. In 6th place we have Fighting the World from 1987, and this album was seen as a slight letdown when it came out, due to it being slightly more commercial than their first four records, which I think you can hear in the anti-MTV track Blow Your Speakers, a song that were released as a single by the way. And the next song, Fighting the World, is also a bit silly and corny, but it's more of a metal anthem, so I dig it. And Carry On also had this weak-ass sing-along chorus, so that's what I don't like about this album. So I think that the other semi-ballad Defender is a much better song. And we also have Violence and Bloodshed, which is a cool track. And we can't forget about Holy War and Black Wind, Fire and Steel, they are also great songs. So one could say that the first couple of tracks are a bit shaky and on the commercial side, but things improve after Carry On. And speaking of Carry On, next. In fifth place with Kings of Metal, the album that came out in 1988 through Atlantic Records. And this was the last Man of War album to feature their original guitarist Ross the Boss Friedman. And I think that there is a slight drop of the quality of the band's outputs after he was fired from the band. And Ross is playing with the band Ross the Boss these days. And they've put out a few records that are worth investigating if you haven't. Anyhow Kings of Metal is a solid release and it features several classic Man of War songs that are still staples in their live shows. Like Wheels of Fire, Kings of Metal and Hail and Kill. Songs that every metal fan should be familiar with, so I won't go too deep into those. And the song Pleasure Slave is also noteworthy for its silly and not so PC lyrics. And Man of War re-recorded this record in 2014, but nothing beats the original, so stick to that one. Next. And now we're down to the last four records on the list, and without spoiling too much, this is the classic early period, where the band put out four great metal albums in just three years. And these first four records are my favorites. So in fourth place we have Sign of the Hammer from 1984. And this album came out just three months after Hail to England. So they were definitely getting busy during 1984. And Sign of the Hammer is a rather consistent album in my opinion with lots of classic Man of War songs and not so much filler content. Animals, Thor and Sign of the Hammer are amazing. And of course the rather corny Old Man Play on 10. 
I thought you were supposed to turn it up to 11. Or maybe that was Spinal Tap. <laughs> Anyhow, Man of War's unapologetic and over the top style might be a bit too blunt for some people, but who doesn't love some sword and sorcery style metal? And at the time it was quite unusual to see a band delve into Norse mythology and Viking lyrics. So Sign of the Hammer is a classic album, and my number 4. Next. In third place we have Hail to England from 1984. And this album kicks off with the glorious blood of my enemies with its galloping rhythms. Good stuff. And the following couple of songs are amazing too. Each Dawn I Die, Kill With Power and the title track Hail to England. The only track that I'm not really sold on here is Black Arrows. Because I never understood why Manowar did these fast and noodling bass solos. I guess it was to show off their skills or something, because it just don't sound good to me. It's like they decided to play Van Halen's Eruption, but they didn't learn the actual song before they started recording it. <laughs> That's how it sounds to me at least. And I also want to mention Eric Adams singing, he's really one of the greatest heavy metal singers. He has a great tone and one could say that he was born to sing for Man of War. He's really the perfect match for the band. So hail hail to Man of War. Hail hail hail. Next. In second place we have the 1982 debut album Battle Hymns. And this album is a bit different from the three that followed it. It's less epic and not as dark or galloping. It certainly has an older vibe to it like an American version of Saxon or something like that. And this album is just stuffed with Man War classics like Death Tone, Metal Days, Shell Shark and Man War. And we also have another bass solo here, William Steele. And this one is certainly better than Black Arrows, but if I skip one song when listening to this album, it's William Steele. And the album ends with Battle Hymn, one of the best songs that Man War ever wrote. And Battle Hymns is a very consistent debut album, and a classic album that belongs in every metal fan's collection. Next. And the number one Man War album is in my opinion Into Glory Ride. And this was the band's second studio album, and it came out back in 1983 through Megaforce Records. This was the moment when Man War rode into glory, because this album is more epic and heavier in comparison to their debut album Battle Hymns for example. There is almost a Black Sabbath style heaviness to some of the songs here, and the sound is so much darker, more menacing and more epic, and I just love how this album sounds, and I really like the production here. Some of the later Man Wars albums sounded a bit stale, but here the sound is just perfect. And my favorite Man Wars song is on this album, The Thunderous and Mighty Gloves of Metal. It's so powerful and mighty that it actually cracks the beam. I also like Secret of Steel, Gates of Valhalla, Hatred and Revelation to name drop a few. And the fact that there's less bullshit on this album. There's not much orchestrations or 7 minute bass noodlings and stuff like that. It's just the pure essence of Man of War here. And now it's time to check out my full rank. And it's almost in chronological order. Which often happens when I do this rank since I prefer the sound and production values of the early 80s in most cases. And one could say that I like the yellow Man of War logo era the most, and then we have the red logo era, and the silver logo era of the band the least. And the last two or three records were a bit uninspiring, but I think that Man of War deserves some cred for sticking to what they do and not budging to criticism that their music and image is ridiculous, or that they hasn't changed that much over the years. And it took me some time to get into Man of War due to their over the top antics. But whether you think that their lyrics and outfits are silly, you just can't deny the greatness of albums like Into Glory Ride, Battle Hymns or Kings of Metal. But now I'm curious to hear about your opinions, what do you think about Man of War? And if you're familiar with their full discography, feel free to rank it down below. And only wimps and posers leave the video without hitting that like button. So don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you aren't already subbed up. Because more ranking all videos are coming up soon.
And I'm also on Patreon if you want to support my work, like these fine gentlemen. Or go and grab yourself some merch at the Ruthless Metal Store. And I'm also on Discord, Facebook and Spotify, so check the links listed down below. And last but not least, let me know whose discography I should rank in the next episode of Rank Em All. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.